You mentioned you mentioned James Waffle, and like I was telling you in the car on our way here, I know James Waffle. I, mm -hmm. I met him. I had to obviously as president of the SUG when I was in Unizik, I had to speak with him. I also met the SS, SSS director as well. So I also knew the police, the head of either the CP or one of those guys. In I had to know these guys, of course, because that was my job in case something happened. With any, because I remember one of the cases I had with a student who came to meet us, and I think her friend was arrested by the police, not SAS, just the normal police. I had to go there and get bail and for them and everything. And they had to pay bail. And because of my presence, they had to release the, the students. My point was, my job was to know these people, just in case. And I remember, yeah, state. exactly. I remember going to meet James Walford, stepping into Okozo's house. And like I was telling you in the car, that place smelled like that. Like, I've never, I can remember the, the smell, but I can't even describe it. Because when you walk into Okozo's house, for people that don't know, when you walk into that, it's by the expressway. Mm -hmm. And when you walk into that building, the smell, the stench, that comes from that place. It's not even like anything that you would imagine. Even even, even, when, you, even when you walk, walk into a mortuary, it's not the same smell. The, the, the smell there is like a smell of, you know, you know terrible things are happening here, but you can't even pinpoint what terrible things are happening or causes are, but you know something bad is mm -hmm. really happening here. The smell alone gives it away. And when I think of and we all knew back in Anambra State, we all knew that, like they say, the, 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 the knowledge of SARS is the beginning of wisdom. That was the kind of term they were using back then in Anambra State because everyone knew what SARS was. Most people also knew who James Walford was, and you mentioned him in your story. And so for me, it's like when you think of him now, 11 years on, when James Walford comes to your mind, I would imagine you think about him all the time. What's, what's, what comes to your thoughts whenever James Wanfor comes to you? Comes to you? James Wanfor is almost the bane of my existence, I guess. I, I pray for long life for him. I want him to live a very long life because I intend to fight until I get justice. And if he dies, I will not get justice. I would never get justice if he dies. So I really want him to live long so I can get justice from him. But the man James Wanfor represents evil to me like when, when we went to the panel and there's this woman that was talking about how the husband was arrested and I think he's a liberal or something and he was arrested and they were like they don't have money to bail him out so they were believing that at some point they will release him because the family we are that poor to not have the money to bail him out and the woman don't have money to give them to give him food, so she will cook and take to the station, mm -hmm. and they will take the food, and we are not even sure that the husband even got the food and everything. And the husband died in that station, and they never got the body back. And when she was telling the story, she was really crying because people were then saying that she killed her husband, that if she said that her husband is dead, how did she know mm -hmm. that she just wants to take over non-existence properties right and it was so painful to look at this woman years after i think this happened in 2014 and the panel was in 2020 i think it was about six or seven years after and she was broken she was sitting on that chair and she was crying and i couldn't do anything to help her and it pained me so badly that how is this man getting away with all of this? How is he a free man eating and experiencing the love of his family when he denies people love? When he denies people even closure, even dignity. There's a dignity that comes with burying your loved ones. So you know where they are at. And if you feel so deeply, you can go to their graveside and cry and all of that. Yeah, yeah. And you deny them this. You make them question their own minds. Am I stupid for believing that my husband or my brother or my sister or my child is late? Should I hold on to hope? You open them up to being manipulated and exploited by a lot of people. 
I can count the churches that my mom went to. My parents, my father is not deeply religious, but my mom dragged him, dragged him to several churches, different homes. They will collect money. They will collect, oh God. TJK is clothes. I don't think we have any left. They will collect clothes, collect shoes, collect pictures, so they can pray, they can do, they can, and it's so hard. People are going out as skelter, trying to find closure that you can give them by just doing the right thing. It's hard. Nobody is hard. So when I think of him, I just I just wish him half of the pain that he has made families go through. If he feels half of what families have felt, he won't even survive it. He won't even survive it. For uh, yeah. For me, James, James Waffle, like, I, 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 I thought about this deeply when, when NSAS happened. And I believe that for, for James to have acted the way he acted, I don't think he was acting alone, obviously. Someone cannot have that level of impunity and that level of malice or hatred or evil without not having the state backing him up. For context, in Anambra states, or I would say in some cases, in some places in Nigeria, you could argue that because of levels of criminality, kidnapping, and violence, you need a group like SARS that will strike fear in the hearts of the bad guys. Like, this, this, this is the, the, bad, the bad part of society, the kidnappers, the, the murderers, those people, right? You need, you need a group like SARS. But at some point, as is the case in Nigeria, these organizations like SARS always end up victimizing the average Nigerian. They don't go after the people that are supposed to go after like the kidnappers, they go after innocent Nigerians like your brother, like others. People that are just coming back from church, people that are just, maybe their hair is a bit, looks a bit funny, or they dye their hair, or they are wearing stripped jeans, or anything, or they're carrying a laptop or an iPhone. And so, for me, when I think of James Wafo, I see him as per the Anambra state government also has to be held liable for, if not all of the actions, or at least most of the actions that he, that's happened under his tenure. And like you are rightly saying, not just under him, it also went on under Ubiano, and I even think under Saluda as well. Like you said last year, someone was killed as well last year. And so for me, it's like, yeah, James Wolfe, of course, he must be held liable, but at some point, he also has to be asked, some of the things you did, like were you acting under someone else's orders? Like was the state governor at the time, whether it was PTOB or OB and also Ludo, were they, any of them asking you or directing you to do any of these things? Whether that, you know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say. Actually, I don't care. That's the truth. Mm. I don't care who asked James Wanford to kill anybody. I don't. My group is with James Wanford. Like, mm. Because even if Anybody, are, if, let, me, let me give an example, the biblical example. If Abraham had killed Isaac, nobody cares if he's saying God asked him to. Uh -huh. The main thing is that he killed Isaac. In fact, the Jews killed Jesus Christ, and it was predestined that he would die, but like, well, he did, uh -huh. was killed by the Spirit. So I don't care who asked him so much for, but I also agree with you that he had um, backings of powerful people, especially within the states, because I say this because when TJK's issue happened, we did not rely on just going to James Wanford to get justice. We wrote to the Anambra State Government, and it was under Peter Obi, then in 2012, yeah, it was under Peter Obi, to take actions. And Peter Obi, being the kind of governor that he is, I'm sure would have seen that petition. But let's say that he didn't see it, of course. I mean, Obi and I, um, Saludo is telling me that he didn't see my petitions. So it's also possible that Peter Obi didn't see it. But like, the atrocities that James Wafo was committing, it's not just to my family. A lot of families, we are begging for government intervention and government didn't intervene. Now, a lot of people would say, well, there was high level of insecurity in Anambra states then, not in 2012, not in 2013. No, it wasn't, it wasn't, that, it wasn't that way. So governments could not afford to overlook, but they did uh -huh. overlook. The excuse then would be, oh, the governor of the state is not in charge of the police. 
fine, great. That's that's a very good one. He's not because the police is a federal agency, but he he has a responsibility to the citizens of the state. The social contract theory is clear yeah. about who is the chief security officer of the state. And if your if your citizens are dying and are asking for your help, right, you could do something. You could ask the AG, Attorney General, to do something to. Call a press conference. To initiate yeah, do, an yeah, investigation yeah, yeah. of their own and sue the police yeah. for indiscriminate killing, extrajudicial killing and all of that. That didn't happen. Um, Peter, what's his name? Obia not took over as the governor. It was still business as usual. 2014 was Obia. 2015 was Obia. People were still killed by James Wanko before he retired, I think, in 2015. 2022, we are back to Okuzo being effective again and people dying at Okuzo Sars under Soludo, I begin to ask, is there something in Okuzo Sass that is bigger than the president, than the governor of Anambra State? I doubt there is. So it is a willful decision to not say or do anything about it. Either they are gaining from it, or they just do not think that is any of their business because, well, none of their children or their ch brother's children are being killed, so they can afford to overlook. And that's the whole problem I have with the Nigerian politician. We, they lack empathy. No matter what they tell me, there is no Nigerian politician that has empathy. It's not about your, 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 your press conferences or, or the words you say on TV or whatever, or the tweets you make. I don't care. Honestly, I don't. Empathy looks like action. It looks like what I'm doing, right? I empathize with families that have lost their loved ones, which is why when I stood under the hot sun, in Abuja, I held their names with me on my T-shirt, on my banner, and I asked for justice for them, which is why wherever I go to my TEDx speech, when I talk to young people like myself, and I ask them, you must meddle, you must be involved, you must do something. Because if you keep quiet, you will become a victim yourself. The problem is that these people are protected. They know that they will never become victims themselves. So Ludo has become part of the elite. He's now a governor. Nothing will happen to his son, even though he's a musician and can decide to carry dreadlocks, which fits the profile of people that police kills. Nothing will happen to him because why? He is Soludo's son. All right? And so they don't care. So even if they don't collude with James Wafo and the police officers at Okuzusas, they do not care. So for me, they are also liable, all of them, from Pito B to Soludo. And I said it, I put it on my Twitter, I said, all of you are responsible. Because these people are people who have given, ceded their rights to you as the governor of their state. That is what the social contract is about. Otherwise, we could begin to fight for ourselves and protect ourselves. The reason why there is a form of government, of any form of government, is because people cede their rights and expect you to then protect them. And when you cannot do that, how then do you call yourself a governor, a president, whatever? All right? So I don't care who was working with James Wanfo. Of course, I know that he has stayed back in the know, but I really want him to pay. And even if they don't ask him who was sending him to do whatever he's doing, or even if he says that he's doing it on his own, why? Why were you killing people? Why were you not giving um, them, why following due processes? Can we get justice for it? So all of these other people, governors, they are hopelessly ineffective for us. So when people ask me who was the best governor of Anambra State, I say nobody has. Nobody has been the best governor of Anambra State, right? Because none of them cares. And when and, and people asked me during the last election, like, who are you voting for? Who do you think is? I said no. None of them has been the best candidate. The, See, you cannot promise me that you will do something about police brutality when you become the president of Nigeria if you cannot join me in a solidarity match. No, you cannot stay in your house and write on Twitter, oh, I, I support and I stand with. Who are you standing with when you're in your house? Brother, come outside. Let us feel you being standing with us, all right? You put your money where your mouth is. You cannot come and tell me you're standing with me while you're comfortably in your house, lying down on your bed, probably writing one, one press or... Uh, press release to come and say you stand with us. We, we don't care about that kind of standing. We are asking you to ask the people that are in power that are your friends, all right? Whether it is Atiku or PDP, they have PDP legislators in, on seats as at the time 
the end SARS happened. If PDP legislators thought that it was an important thing, that was also when P2B was still in PDP, it was an important thing that they care about, they could have pushed for it at, 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 at the National Assembly, both House of Rep and Senate. All right? There were states that were owned by the PDP, that were like the PDP the we are the gov yeah, yes. being governing. They could have pushed for police um, Reform. reformation and transformation, okay? None of this happened. So when they tell that they stand with you, they are lying. These people are lying to us, okay? That's, that, that's it. So if you think that anything would happen, that if they come tomorrow to write on Twitter or even call me and talk to me, that will take them seriously. I don't. When you call me and talk to me about issues like this, and I know that you're a powerful person that can help me and you're not helping me, I look at you as just, of course, it's social capital. You want to say, oh, you have talked to the family. Yeah. But brother, <laughs> talking to the family does nothing for me. Right now, P2B is the, well, you could say national leader of the Labour Party. The Labour Party has all the legislators in the National Assembly are from Labour Party in Anambra State. Uh -huh. Has he talked to any one of them to bring up this issue? Yes, he can't do anything. He's not uh, in power, right? But he has these people that are his friends, that are his comrades, that are his party members. Has he talked to them to do anything about it? Or he's going to skirt around it? In Anambra State, APGA has the numbers, has numbers, right? How many of them has thought that, okay, it's time for us to discuss this? In fact, we don't even care that I've got APC, PDP, whatever. This is an Anambra issue. How many of our legislators at, at the Anambra State House of Assembly has ever talked about it? Is it not important? Are they not ashamed of themselves that the NSAS panel stood in Anambra? We had over 100 cases in Anambra State. Indicting one man, and all of you sit down in, your, in the comfort of your homes, right? And act like it did not happen. They're not ashamed of themselves. The Anambra State government was the last employer of James Wanko. And they say they cannot prosecute him. How many times the Anambra people beg Anambra State government to prosecute a man they employed? A killer, a killer cop that has not denied it. The police have confirmed that he did kill people that were arrested under him. And nothing, Anambra State government, nothing that you should ask. They're asking us, oh, come to the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, or oh, write a, a petition, or oh, this. When would government start being proactive? Why do they have to always be reactive? When? So, see, all of this, what I want is justice for myself and justice for all other families. We deserve it. First, we are Nigerians, and so we deserve it. But also, more importantly, we are humans. It's our rights. The whole idea of self-actualization that government is supposed to give us is, it looks like this, social justice. Give us justice. Whether it's an Anambra person or the woman in River State, the, the girl that was talking about his brother that was killed, she was crying during answers. Nobody did anything. Someone bears herself, opens up a traumatic story, tells it over and over again, cries over it on national TV, on international TV. Open their family. This is an open and short case. Nobody has, I don't think that anybody who has come to speak about their brother or their sister or their father or their mother being arrested by police and killed in Nigeria has ever claimed that, 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 this, that this person is innocent. They are asking you to do the right thing. The, the criminal justice system in Nigeria is clear. You are innocent until proven guilty. And the only way to be proven guilty or to be convicted of any crime is through a competent court with jurisdiction, right? It is not the police, the, is, the police has no right whatsoever to decide to become the judge, the jury, the executor. In fact, there are very few crimes in Nigeria that comes with a death sentence. Okay? Even rape in Nigeria, which I am advocating for that rape should have a death sentence, right? Does not even have it. Corruption where they steal thousands of our money, which leads to death of millions of Nigerians on a daily basis, do not have a death sentence. So I do not see why walking around in the night should have a death sentence. I don't see the reason why it should. It shouldn't. I don't see why boys coming together to make noise or play or go home late should have a death sentence. In fact, if you think that they are constituting reasons, arrest them and release them the next day. It's fine. All of these things is, again, to show you how wicked heartless 
our political elite is and how silly the Nigerian police is to be allow themselves to be used to enforce the kind this kind of criminality and wickedness.